Order. The Parliament is still in session, so could I ask guests leaving the gallery to do so quietly, please? The next item of business today is the Members' Business Debate on Motion No. 10003 in the name of Alex Johnston on Aberdeen's engagement strategy with Japan. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Alex Johnston to open the debate. Seven minutes, please, Mr Johnston. Deputy Presiding Officer, it gives me great pleasure to bring this debate to the Scottish Parliament this afternoon. And in opening, may I welcome the Consul General of Japan, Mr Hajime Kitaoka, who has come to observe the proceedings from the Presiding Officer's Gallery. Recently, oh, <laughs> recently, Councillor Ross Thompson of Aberdeen City Council moved a motion to the Council to pursue a formal engagement strategy between the City of Aberdeen and Japan, which I am pleased to say was passed unanimously. It comes at a time when there is a huge interest in Scotland from Japan, demonstrating, demonstrated by the amount of contact my office receives from Japanese organisations and the substantial coverage by Japanese media of the referendum. Only last week, I and other MSPs were interviewed uh, on our views on the referendum by Hokiado Simbum, Shimbum, a Japanese newspaper which enjoys a circulation of some two million copies. This welcome initiative by Aberdeen City Council is the latest step in a long and fascinating relationship between the city and Japan, which dates back to the 19th century, as Japan at that time began to emerge from a period of strict foreign relations policies known as Sakoku, at a time her uh, place uh, as an industrialised nation uh, on the world stage began to emerge. Thomas Blake Glover, a man who hailed from the northeast of Scotland and whose name has been instantly recognised by every Japanese person I have met, played a pivotal role in this. Among his many achievements in Japan were supplying Japan with its first modern ships, which were built in Aberdeen. He also imported into Japan the first dry dock, which was also constructed in Aberdeen and shipped to Nagasaki. Ultimately, that dry dock would play a crucial role in the development of Mitsubishi and assisting the plan. Uh, he also assisted in a plan to smuggle five young samurai out of Japan to be educated in the West. These young men, now famously known as the Choshu Five, would all at some point stay in Aberdeen and on returning to their native country played pivotal roles in the development of modern Japan. More recently, Aberdeen signed a Citizens' Friendship City affiliation with Nagasaki, and the Council has also joined the cross-party group in Japan, which now meets here in the Scottish Parliament. Other initiatives include the Thomas Blake Glover Aberdeen Asset Scholarship, and one Aberdeen resident, Mr Ronnie Watt, has been honoured by the Emperor of uh, Japan and Government with the Order of the Rising Sun. Each year, Mr Watt's organisation presents recipients who have served or excelled in the relevant field with either the Scottish Samurai Award or the Scottish Samurai Shogun Award. Against the backdrop of this extraordinary history between Aberdeen and Japan, especially the city of Nagasaki, the modern arguments for Aberdeen to pursue an ever closer and mutually beneficial relationship with Japan are overwhelming. Across the UK, there are 921 Japanese companies with 140,000 employees. 65 of these companies operate in Scotland, su uh, supporting the employment of some 5,000 people directly. Many be will be surprised to learn that within Asia, it is Japan which is the highest number of business links with the UK. In 2012, Japanese companies invested $33.4 billion in the UK, placing us only second to the Netherlands within the EU. Japan's investment flow to the UK was up by around 15% in 2013, which actually exceeded Japan's investment flow to China. But this is not a one-way street. 
Many opportunities exist for Scotland and, the UK, and UK companies to export to Japan. To give just one example, between January and June 2013 alone, some £45 million worth of food and non-alcoholic drinks were exported from the UK to Japan. I believe that the desire to deliver this strategy has come at a, just the right time. The Japanese programme for growth, often referred to as Abenomics, has shown results. The real GDP of Japan is up, average earnings are up, and employment, un unemployment is down. There are also an estimated 1.9 million high net worth individuals living in Japan. Aberdeen is also well placed to deliver a high quality experience to Japanese visitors. In a survey by Visit Britain, three of the top, of the top sought after activities in Britain were positioned here in Scotland, with a whisky tour in, the Scottish, in a Scottish distillery coming eighth on the list of 20. And members may be interested to know that a picture of a Scottish castle came second on a list of iconic images for Japanese people, easily beating other images such as the London Eye. I sincerely hope that the stra this strategy also results in a greater number of visitors arriving from Japan to share our rich culture and history. I know they will certainly be warmly welcomed in Aberdeen. Turning to the strategy itself, I believe that one of the key strengths of this proposal is the ability of Aberdeen to capitalise on its role as the energy capital of Europe and forge new and exciting partnerships which will build on our exciting and existing strong relationship. Aberdeen stands ready to bring its decades of experience in offshore energy to work closely with Japan in exploiting her own energy resources. But perhaps even more importantly, both Scotland and Japan are working tirelessly to increase the amount of energy harnessed from renewable sources such as offshore wind and photovoltaics. Once again, Aberdeen has much to offer, giving huge potential for cooperation in research and development, trade, and of course, the reduction in carbon emissions, which we all seek. Vital though it is, the strategy proposed by Aberdeen City Council is about so much more than trade. It offers the opportunity for greater engagement, cooperation, and understanding on many levels. It also seeks to deliver closer ties through education and with two world-class universities, Aberdeen is ideally placed for academic collaboration. And I sincerely hope that local schools will also be able to play a role, perhaps by linking with their counterparts in Japan. Turning to sport, I was delighted to play a part in encouraging the Japanese cricket team to visit Scotland last year. The tour was hugely successful and I'm assured that the team, having received such warm, a warm welcome here in Scotland, are very keen to return. I'm also aware that the, Japanese play, uh, the Scottish players thoroughly enjoyed meeting their Japanese counterparts socially and I hope that this success can be re replicated across other sports, setting the example to promote friendship and understanding between the Scots and the Japanese. Mr Johnson, could you start to conclude, please? Presiding officer, I, along with many in Japan, wholeheartedly welcome the proposal by Aberdeen City Council to formalise their engagement with Japan. It <laughs> promises a host of exciting opportunities which can only be of great benefit to both sides, and I very much look forward to seeing it develop and ultimately playing a hugely important role in promoting great friendship and understanding, not just between Aberdeen and Japan, but Scotland and Japan. In moving the motion in my name, I would like to conclude by saying, Gicho, arigato, gozaimasu. Many thanks. I now call Mark MacDonald to be followed by Lewis MacDonald. Thank you very much, presiding officer. And can I congratulate Alec Johnson on securing the debate today. And I think um, for those of us in this chamber who only ever hear about the times when the folk in Aberdeen City Council are disagreeing with each other and occasionally with ourselves, um, it's good to see that this was an approach that could be taken unanimously across political parties. Um, <clears throat> 
As Alec Johnson highlighted, there is a long relationship that exists between Scotland and Japan, in particular the city of Aberdeen in the northeast of Scotland and Japan. And I think it's only right that we seek modern links to build on those historic ties. Uh, Alec Johnson mentioned the scholarship uh, which Aberdeen Asset Management uh, introduced, the Thomas Blake Culver Scholarship, uh, which provides a grant of £5,000 uh, for an individual to travel to Japan for intensive study of Japanese language at the International Christian University Summer Programme. Uh, the winning student learns all aspects of Japanese language and culture from Japanese write writing systems through to the traditional Japanese tea ceremony. And that builds on Aberdeen Asset Management having had uh, business based in Japan since 2006. Um, one of the things which uh, also needs to be looked at as well are cultural uh, opportunities and cultural links and uh, in 2011 September 2011 the Scottish Samurai Festival was held uh, in the Bridge of Dawn which is where Thomas Blake Glover uh, lived before he moved to Nagasaki. If my colleague Stuart Stevenson was here he would be reminding us all that Glover was in fact born in Fraserburgh uh, in his constituency but since he's not here I'll talk about my own constituency if that's all right. Uh, the event the Scottish Samurai Festival was sponsored by Mitsubishi along with uh, a range of local and national companies as well, including the Council, uh, the Mains of Scotston in the Bridge of Dawn, uh, and also Scottish Development International. And what that was about was about a celebration uh, of the links between uh, the community of the Bridge of Dawn, the city of Aberdeen, and uh, ja Japan as well. And it involved um, a, a fantastic parade where Theatre Modu, a social enterprise, uh, worked with classes from Old Macker and Bridge of Dawn Academies and youth and community groups as well uh, and gave them lessons in stilt walking, uh, samurai swordsmanship um, and also uh, fire breathing as well. And there are some fantastic pictures on the Old Macker Academy website uh, of people testing out fire breathing with the proviso that it is not to be tried at home. But I think that what we also see is that link continuing in terms of culture uh, and sport, as um, Alec uh, Johnston mentioned. Um, Japan Day 2014 is taking place uh, in, on Sunday the 8th of June, uh, this Sunday coming in Aberdeen, with the, the 10th anniversary Kendo Thistle Cup, um, and a free admission event which will offer visitors the chance to practice calligraphy, play traditional Japanese games, learn about bonsai, try on a kimono, learn about uh, Japanese flower arrangement and watch and sample traditional Japanese food being made and, and then participate in the aforementioned tea ceremony. Uh, and that's being held uh, at the International School of Aberdeen on Sunday 8th of June. So I think if folk can make it along to that, it would certainly be worth their while doing so. Uh, and Alec Johnson also mentioned the trade and energy links, and I think that is very important. And obviously there has been a lot of work been going on uh, in that regard. John Swinney, for example, visited Japan in 2012 uh, and returned, late, uh, returned a year, uh, again a year later to meet with renewables, life sciences, textiles, food and drink businesses in Kyoto and Tokyo. Mitsubishi itself has invested over £100 million into Scottish renewables uh, in 2010 and also have a research and development facility in Livingston, which Fergus Ewing uh, has helped to open. So there are uh, a range of links that are already there, and I think any formalisation of links that can be achieved uh, is to be welcomed. And uh, I'm sure the Minister will be uh, paying close attention to that strategy and looking at ways that some of the themes from that strategy can be replicated at a national level in terms of the links between the Scottish uh, Government and Japan as well. So I'm, I'm pleased to have been able to, to contribute to this debate to, to shed a little bit of light on some of the links that do exist, because I think sometimes we, we, we don't make enough of these links that exist between uh, not just Scotland and Japan but also Aberdeen and Japan. So more power to the arm of those who are seeking to do so now. Many thanks. Lewis MacDonald to be followed by Cameron Buchanan. Thank you very much and uh, I too congratulate Aberdeen City Council and its partners in Japan for their ever closer engagement and I congratulate Alex Johnson on bringing this issue for debate here today. As he said, Thomas Blake Lover represents the enterprising spirit of North East Scotland both in his own time and in ours. The Nagasaki shipyard, which Glover founded, and Mitsubishi, with which he worked for its first 40 years, symbolised Japan's success in adopting and taking forward modern technologies both then and now. It is to the credit of both the City Council and Mitsubishi that Glover's home in Aberdeen is to be upgraded and promoted for, for visitors from both Scotland and Japan so that all those with an interest in the story of the Scottish samurai can see for themselves the place where he grew up. 
that will certainly be money well spent. And visitors from Scotland will no doubt also enjoy visiting Glover's Mansion in Tokyo, said to be the inspiration for Madame Butterfly. And many will also enjoy the product of the Curran Brewery, uh, which he also helped to found. History, culture and tourism all offer common ground, but there are also links, as has been said, between our industrial economies so important to both Aberdeen and Japan. Offshore oil and gas have made Aberdeen home to people from across the globe and one of the two major centres of the global oil and gas industry. The European Offshore Wind De Deployment Centre in Aberdeen Bay offers the prospect of putting the city at the centre of offshore renewable energy too. And I'm delighted that Aberdeen is now planning to stage its own renewable energy exhibition and conference in future years. Japan, with its traditions of industrial innovation, going back to the time of Thomas Glover, is one of the leading lights in developing new technologies for both the oil and gas industry and renewables, making it a natural fit for trade and cooperation with the energy capital of Europe. Aberdeen City Council uh, leaders have already visited Japan this year to showcase the best that the city has to offer and to meet with potential partners to discuss, among other things, the opportunities uh, for cooperation in the development of hydrogen technology. Councillor Barney Crockett, convener of enterprise planning and infrastructure and then leader of the council, met with Mr Akio Fukui, who has been a key leader in the Mitsubishi Corporation and has had an absolutely pivotal role in building up the relationship between Aberdeen and Japan in recent years. Mr Fukui is a global Scot and also works closely with UK trade and investment in promoting links between our countries. I would take this opportunity to pay tribute to his engagement with Aberdeen and also to pay tribute to the role played by Barney Crockett in promoting Aberdeen as a city keen to do business, both in Japan and elsewhere around the world. Because Aberdeen's global vision is broad indeed. In the last two years, city councillors have agreed a trade link with South Korea based on renewable energy technology and marine engineering, while key business people from China have also been welcomed to the city in recent months. The growing role of oil companies from those countries in the North Sea is well known. And I think it is right that Scotland's city regions should develop their own strategies in this way, working to their individual strengths rather than simply following a one-size-fits-all national strategy. Aberdeen has led the way on a cross-party basis, and I'm delighted that elected representatives of all the groups involved in the current uh, administration of the city are with us here in the gallery today. I congratulate them and all those involved with these efforts to promote and increase Aberdeen's global reach, and I commend the city's innovative engagement with Japan as an example for the rest of Scotland to follow. Many thanks. I now call Cameron Buchanan to be followed by Richard Baker. Thank you. Can I add my congratulations to Aberdeen City Council for their formal engagement strategy and to congratulate the Consul General Kitoka San on appearing here and coming here. My own uh, experience is not particularly with the Northeast or with Aberdeen, although I have led two trade missions to Japan uh, in, in my former role, both with the SCDI and the U United Kingdom Fashion and Textile Corporation. Uh, I've always been, I've, the first one I led was with a, a lot of people from Aberdeen, including the Textile Federation, Crombie, which is sadly uh, not there any longer. But I've known Japan very well for a long time, and I've been about 15 times to Japan. I've always been impressed, particularly by their way they do business, their safe country, and indeed their great humor. As an illustration of their great humor, I have a particular one. I led a trade mission. I was in the Hilton Hotel in Osaka, and I was leading a trade mission, and next door to me was a, a, um, a company selling golf clubs. And they were selling golf clubs, and they had a special golf club that when you swung it, it made a noise. If you swung it correctly, it made a noise. If you didn't swing it correctly, it made no noise at all. So they guy next to me, a fellow next to me, who was actually uh, Anglo-Japanese, ratcheted the thing up to number four. And I couldn't get the blooming thing to work at all. And I gave it an almighty swing. It left my hands, went up, hit the chandelier, and came down again. Smashed the chandelier. The Japanese then walked around with some umbrellas, carrying the umbrellas. And when I was presented with a bill for the chandelier, they said, Mr. Buchanan, for your hole in one. <laughs> so they've got a lot of, of humour. I was also going to say that when they talked about the... the um, Japanese castles and, sorry, Scottish castles and Japan, 
uh, the way they can recognize things. There have been many, many weddings in Elandonan Castle, and that was the actual castle they've had there, because they, they come there, they love dressing up in the kilts, they have a traditional Japanese wedding in Japan, and they come over to Scotland and have another wedding. I've been to one of them. I also felt that their education has been superb. We've had a number of exchanges. I've done a number of exchanges, particularly in textiles, having Japanese people come and work in our, when I was in the textile industry, come and work in, in our, um, I can't say it's a factory, warehouse really, and try and get the exchanges going. Their way of working is very different. They don't leave until the last, till the boss has left. They never leave. <laughs> Mr Buchanan, I have to say to you, this is a very tightly written motion. It's My all apologies. about Aberdeen's engagement. So I would be grateful right. if perhaps you could make some mention of Aberdeen's engagement. Well, I did, say, I did say, Deputy Presiding Officer, I, had, I did take people from the North East as well. However, I will now cease my wanderings and close. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I now call Richard Baker. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. And can I uh, also begin by congratulating uh, Alex Johnson on securing today's debate and can I acknowledge as well his commitment to the links between Japan and Scotland more widely uh, through his convenership of the cross-party group on Japan but I will be very focused on uh, Aberdeen's link uh, today although we, we all enjoyed Mr Buchanan's contribution uh, and Mr Johnson has been quite right to bring to our attention today the importance of that historic link uh, between Aberdeen and Japan through the contribution of Thomas Blake Glover to the development of uh, Japanese industry and to uh, such an important firm as uh, Mitsubishi. Although, of course, his contribution to commerce in Japan went far broader uh, than uh, just that. As Lewis MacDonald said, he helped found the Japan Brewery Company, which became the major uh, Kirin Brewery Company, which distributes its products across the world and very much as well to Aberdeen. And um, uh, he also promoted the mining and rail industries in Japan as well. So he was certainly somebody who engaged in enterprise in a whole different range of fields. And it's right that his achievements should be properly recognised in this country, including through Glover House in Aberdeen, as they undoubtedly are in Japan, where I understand Glover Garden House in Nagasaki attacks, attracts two million visitors every year. The people in Aberdeen should be aware and proud of his achievements, and they should inspire more of our people to achieve great things across the world. And I hope Glover today will be proud that in his native city, that pioneering, achieving spirit is alive and well with Aberdeen, a truly globally connected city and the energy hub of Europe. This brings people from across the world to Aberdeen and sees skilled workers from a city travel the globe, particularly in the energy industry. So I'm very pleased at the contribution of Thomas Blake Glover and the importance of Aberdeen's links with Japan have been recognised by our City Council in developing the Japan engagement strategy. Uh, and our city's role as energy hub of Europe and of course our local authority has ensured we capitalise on this strong position by encouraging more international companies to bring their business to Aberdeen and of course this very much applies to Japan as well. Lewis MacDonald has rightly referred to the contribution made by Barney Crockett uh, in this uh, important work and it's also good that we are joined uh, today in the chamber uh, by uh, Councillor Ross Thompson, by Deputy Provost John Reynolds and by Councillor uh, Willie uh, Young and that shows the commitment of the Council uh, to these important issues which we are debating uh, today. Uh, the delegation from the Council to Japan has been an important development in renewing and strengthening the links between Aberdeen and Japan, because as uh, Alec Johnson has pointed out, these links are not simply about marking the significance of the historical link, they are about building stronger links in the future as well. And fittingly, given Glover's multifaceted approach to his own life in industry, there are a whole range of activities where it's natural for institutions and businesses in Aberdeen to work more closely with their Japanese counterparts in renewables, in food and drink, with our successful uh, whiskey industry, in golf tourism, and of course, through the work of our universities. I know there has already been collaborative research between Aberdeen University and academic institutions in Japan. So I hope this new engagement strategy uh, between Aberdeen and Japan will be successful in the future, will be mutually beneficial to both parties and will stimulate investment, research and jobs both in Aberdeen and in Japan. Because this would be a fitting legacy for the immense contribution of Thomas Blake Glover and will be supported not only across uh, this chamber and across the council chamber, but in Japan and in our great city of Aberdeen as well. Many thanks.
Can I now invite Hamza Yusuf to respond to the debate minister in around seven minutes, please? Yes, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, I'm delighted uh, to uh, welcome this debate and thank uh, Alex Johnson for securing it. Uh, I also welcome uh, His Excellency the Consul General, uh, Yokoso, uh, welcome here to the Chamber. Uh, it would be remiss of me uh, not to also put on record the fantastic work, uh, especially that I've, uh, uh, the interaction that I've had with his predecessor, with the Consul General's uh, predecessor, uh, Consul Tah uh, Tarahara, uh, as well, who was a, a great asset uh, to Japan, but also uh, here to Scotland. Many of us uh, that interacted with him were serenaded uh, by his singing, but uh, he was equally uh, as good in terms of creating those links uh, between Scotland and Japan. Uh, great contributions uh, across the chamber. I, I've heard, I was really looking forward to this debate because I knew I would hear some interesting facts about the links between Aberdeen uh, and Japan, some by Mark McDonald and Alex Johnson uh, and other speakers too in particular, uh, really uh, things that I didn't know about, but shows the depth and the strength of connection over the years that sometimes we take for granted. Uh, perhaps we, we should be doing a lot more from a government perspective uh, as well as uh, with the Council. I'm also delighted to welcome uh, the, the, the wider engagement strategy that Aberdeen City Council uh, would like to pursue. I think it's uh, important to do that. Uh, my word of advice, uh, if it's worth anything uh, to the Council, would be just as the Scottish Government has to do. It's worth being very targeted in terms of the geography you wish to target within Japan and also the sectors within Japan. There's many sectors uh, that Aberdeen could connect, but the energy has been mentioned uh, by those here, and I think that's a, a great place um, to start. In 2011, we celebrated the 20th anniversary of the opening of the Japanese consulate in Scotland, one of the, the oldest consulates actually here in Scotland. Uh, having the consulate here as an important commitment uh, by the Japanese government reflects how important successive Japanese go governments have set the links between uh, Scotland and Japan. Uh, we welcome this and we're committed uh, to working with the consulate uh, and their staff. Uh, Japan, as you've, we've heard in the debate, is the world's third largest economy. We've long recognised it's important as an investor in Scottish Development International, our uh, public agency that deals with our uh, trade and investment, uh, has had an office in Tokyo uh, since the mid-80s. Uh, they continue not only to actively encourage Scottish companies to explore the opportunities in the Japanese market, but also, of course, uh, the other way around in terms of investment too. And on that note, there are uh, currently 65 Japanese companies uh, in Scotland employing uh, almost 5,000 people. Many of those companies in the northeast of Scotland, uh, many of them uh, in Aberdeen, and the benefits of those northeast companies felt uh, in Aberdeen. Uh, Scotland's first Japanese investor, uh, Terasaki Electric, actually established operations over 40 years uh, ago. Uh, now has its uh, European and African operations uh, in Clyde Bank. They celebrated their 40th anniversary uh, just uh, last year in June. Uh, more recently, uh, new investment activity in Japan has created 21 new jobs uh, and safeguarded uh, 74. The Scottish Government has a, a continued engagement uh, from a ministerial perspective, uh, a ministerial level with uh, Japan. A minister's presence in a country uh, can often help to uh, show our own commitment from Scotland uh, to various countries and uh, the Cabinet Secretary uh, for Rural Affairs and Environment, Richard Lockhead, in 2012 uh, visited Japan with a delegation of uh, some of uh, t uh, about 20 Scottish food and drink companies for an in-market workshop in Japan. Again, companies coming from the northeast uh, of Scotland. And in the first nine months of 2013, uh, food exports from Scotland to Japan were worth 15.1 uh, million. That's up uh, a couple of percent, two percent, on the first nine months of the previous year before. So, as well as energy, which has been focused on uh, here, uh, Aberdeen in the North East also has other assets in food and drink, uh, rightly mentioned by uh, Alex Johnson, uh, certainly uh, one of them. Uh, that visit being followed up uh, in May last year by the Cabinet Secretary for Finance, uh, Employment and Sustainable Growth, John Swinney, uh, to build on previous uh, investments, uh, uh, previous uh, engagements uh, as well. The number of Scottish companies that have a presence uh, in Japan uh, is increasing. Uh, we have Royal Bank of Scotland, Aberdeen Asset Management, Wood Mackenzie, uh, and Johnson uh, of Johnson's of Elgin. Again, the North East and Aberdeen uh, well represented. Uh, the Scottish Government values our connection uh, with Japan uh, above and beyond uh, just trade and investment. And many members here uh, have mentioned some of those important educational links, uh, particularly again uh, with Aberdeen. Uh, Aberdeen and Robert Gordon uh, universities have a number of links 
with Japanese institutions, Richard Baker uh, quite rightly mentioning their exchange and research programmes. Uh, the University of Aberdeen and the Rotary Club of Aberdeen, Balgowney, sponsors the annual Thomas Blake Glover Scholarship, gives students uh, an excellent opportunity to uh, undertake a three-week uh, study exchange in Nagasaki. Uh, we also have uh, a number, uh, 205 uh, Japanese students at higher education institutes here in Scotland. Uh, fair to say that they make a, a fantastic uh, contribution, uh, having studied uh, myself along with one of those international students when I was in Glasgow University. Uh, you know, they were certainly the last ones uh, to leave the library and certainly weren't messing around the library as much as uh, other students uh, like myself uh, were doing. So just as uh, Alex Johnson, uh, Lewis MacDonald and others mentioned the hard work ethic within factories and other places, actually that's also replicated uh, by Japanese students too. Uh, one of the first engagements I had, uh, presiding officer, uh, as a minister was to mark the 30th anniversary of the Japanese school uh, in Livingston. Uh, I myself went to a, uh, an Urdu school as a child and it wasn't too different uh, to that. You learn a bit of the culture, a bit of the language uh, and you get to socialise. But uh, what, it was, uh, what was even more impressive about the Japanese school is that it also provides a lot of confidence to the Japanese investor community here in Scotland. I met a number of uh, individuals from a variety of uh, Japanese companies who were there and saying that one of the main factors for them moving to Scotland was that, that there was a whole ecosystem uh, built. There was a school for their children, specifically for their language and the culture, that they took extraordinarily uh, importantly. Just to, to finish off, uh, presiding officer, cultural, uh, cultural links are also very important to us. Uh, many of us will know about the uh, Victoria and Albert Museum being built in Dundee, of course, designed by uh, Kengo Kuma. There are also uh, a Japanese architect. There are also a number of uh, tours and links and uh, uh, performances uh, exchanges that we, we have and we're delighted uh, to support them and continue uh, to support them uh, as well. Uh, in terms of sport and sporting links, many have mentioned uh, those sporting links, uh, the cricket uh, match, and uh, uh, which I don't think many people would have known Japanese, J Japan's uh, uh, like of the sport of cricket, but then perhaps equally not many people know Scotland's like uh, of the game too. So I remember that uh, debate uh, that took place. Um, in terms of uh, uh, sporting activity, uh, the tour uh, that uh, was mentioned by Alex Johnson uh, supported Cricket for Smiles Aid, which was set up after the Japanese earthquake in 2011 to help children in the affected area. So those sporting links also having uh, a great outcome too. Uh, I'm going to skip over the football because the last time Japan played Scotland, it was 2-0 to the Japanese, uh, though I was quite happy because Nakamura uh, from my... Uh, home club Celtic uh, put in a good performance but we'll glaze over uh, that so in conclusion uh, presiding officer uh, absolutely uh, continue to support and build upon the links uh, with Japan the Scottish government will do that but equally delighted that our councils are taking this initiative I congratulate Aberdeen and all those involved and I wish the wider engagement strategy uh, every success thank you minister before I suspend parliament could I just remind re um, members for the record that under Rule 7.2.3, contributions must be relevant to the motion, and that includes responses by ministers. And in terms of members' business motions, quite often those motions are very, very specific, as uh, the one was today. In the circumstances, I am entitled um, to, under the rules, to stop the member. However, as members may realise, I always prefer to remind the member simply to come back to the topic. I now suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30pm. <laughs>